and this is by Huckleberry Hacks. My uncle is no ordinary guy, and he has put after it draft. At the crossroads where I could have turned, I, excuse me, let me start again. At the crossroads where I could have turned left, I heard something whispered to me, wait, take a moment. You do not need to rush. Sit here with me and we can count the cars. We can talk about the essence of Ford, if you like. My uncle is no ordinary guy. He sees things between the cracks. He sees how water can bounce from one leaf to another, and how some things spring back when the weight is taken off, and how some things don't. Wait, he said to me, calling from a far away, but so that only I could hear him. He didn't talk about the gates at all. He didn't do the whole they only open in one direction lecture. Instead, he told me about a car that actually had a square steering wheel and about the first time he saw me and how it changed stuff. I never realized that my uncle gave up smoking because of me. My uncle is no ordinary guy. I didn't really care at what time about Austin and horsepower and rust. Perhaps he wondered whilst we sat there if any of this was actually mattering. It was. It did. It still does. To this day, I remember that door held open as I passed, that hail, that whisper, the broken biscuits on the table, the crumbs on the floor between us. It was nice to have crumbs. It was not nice not to have to worry about them. I ask him now what moved him to me, what brought him to my ear. Because I understand how bystanders watch, he said, and that time I was not prepared to be one. And that was by Huckleberry Hacks. My uncle is no ordinary guy. Six New Quatrains by Earl Deakin On every object you've seen on television ends in a landfill site some day. And if you've heard humanity's wishing well, you can almost command each sway. The only one pillow for people like us, so it has to be occupied with timeless rush. So almost call you again last night. Hoping you could pl please move just one more touch. Somewhere else other than mission. Where reproduces bright the scariest grin. Soft and quiet men. Near soft and quiet women. Fearing, oh how I wish the sight could win. I'm at war with nature's hour, perfecting one touch punch, explaining to rhyme, but need touching, then winning by the right hand lunch. That's what poets call the fear of pressing a button. Who will grow up today and publish the right to nothing? How did my business partners say it? I want to cut knife. Did you check the 407 on that thing? Now that's nice. Yes, that is. This one is by Persephone Phoenix, and it's called Poem About a Nightmare, but not the part where I had a penis. <laughs> I love this poem. The English are so particular about their tea, but not much else. Necessarily, just tea. The water must be boiled first, not just steaming, completely boiled. 
So I am trying to make him tea, but fail, because at this altitude boiling is hard to come by. I'm in the penthouse. Man, I've turned up my modern gas range hotter and hotter and watch for bubbles that never come. He's looking away over his trench-coated shoulder for rain-fed hills where water boils when it's supposed to. Here, in the thick taste of his disappointment, this is the part where I stop in my recollection, because it gets even worse later. After the untouched tea, he unzips my dress. Dot, dot, dot. A Persephone Phoenix poem about a nightmare, but not the part where I had a penis. <laughs> Frog. Frog. Magic lives in your eyes, that apple green, at tones as warm as matured Calvados. I feel inspired as your gaze meets mine. To bind me with its spell, I see in wishes but words in passing sparkled intuition, and I've been turned into a frog before. Although I like a girl who's only almost pure, but as true as a perfect note, and your voice is fresh as snow that settles into my being to soothe my dreams, to lift me above my fears as you whisper fairy tales of dragons and golden hearts. Yes, forever is for ages to catch. Flies, but I have already waited that long for you. That was lovely, Saberman. This again was passed to me by Corwin Allen, and it's called A Geek Fibonacci Love Poem. <laughs> if I could write a poem that had elements of all the things that make up you, then it would be a periodic table of love and I would be the electron that orbits you, my atom, and life would be a gas. Oh, <laughs> I like that. Corwin Allen, April 2009. Poiclothermic. Straw-colored grass under a glary sun. The vast plain dozes in October heat. Ancient ruins are the only remnants of a life once vibrant at this place, the port Ostia Antica. Streets and houses, stones overgrown, nature takes back her territory. A blue smile on her cirrus-clouded afternoon face. Lizards chase ghosts, shooing across me mosaics. The spirits of this place leave me sinking, drunken on a stone, and into it and beyond. I see more stones, guards at Easter Island watching over another plain, guards at Stonehenge watching the altar stone, stones in Mycenaean Crete. Stones in Troy and Sparta, stones in Egypt and David's land, warmed up by sun and blood. Sculptures of men's menses mirror their inability of giving birth. Creation is converted into a rush of blood on cold, stony skins, always in need for another sun. By Morgan Macmillan, July 18, 2009.